hey, so a few months ago, I made this video on how to create and automate an AI influencer. It was one of my most popular videos and I always wanted to make a follow-up video, but I haven't found anything that I thought was worth watching until today. Because I came across this video, which is a short look behind the scenes of the agency who created like one of the first AI influencers ever, at least one of the most notable ones. And they're showing the tools they're using, the process that they go through to create great AI images of an AI influencer. And if you don't really know what I'm talking about, I'm talking about this girl or this girl. She's called Aitana. She was one of the first AI influencers. So basically a character consistent Instagram profile of a young woman um, who looked basically human. There was no tell that she was AI generated, but she was created by these guys in an agency. So this is her profile. And as of today, she almost has 350,000 followers. And if you check the comments of each of her posts, people can't tell that she is AI generated. And if you look at these images closely, you can see that the quality is just of another level. So for this video, I'd like to do two things. I'd like to watch this short video with you together and see what information we can gather from it. And then I would like to show you what I'm using in early 2025 to create AI influencers. Uh, and uh, spoiler alert, I'm not an agency. I'm just using household tools. And their quality has gotten so good that you can create images like this looking as good as the ones from Aitana or even better with just off the shelf software that I'm going to show you. So the second part of this video is going to show you my tools that I'm recommending right now to create AI influencers that are lo looking virtually human. So the rules of YouTube say that I have to drag this out as long as possible, but I hate this kind of videos and I would like to get straight to the point. If you prefer that, I would appreciate it if you could leave a like on this video or maybe even subscribe to the channel or what also really helps me if you sign up one to the tools that I'm recommending through the links in the description or in the first comment. Thanks. I've added chapters so you can, you can just jump ahead to the parts that interest you. You can uh, jump into that video that I showed you. It's linked uh, below in the description. All right, so let's get started watching the video. To shoot with no model. She's not late though. She doesn't exist. And here we already have the first clue. So what they're doing here is they're capturing the background of the image that the AI influencer is later going to be combed in in camera. So that's already cheating <laughs> because the background is not AI generated. It's a real picture of Barcelona, which is a, a, great, a great thing if you're an agency uh, and you have uh, customers like Audi, for example, who pay you uh, to fly probably to New Mexico to shoot backplate for the image that you're going to comp your AI influencer in later. You and I might not have the same um, possibilities of doing that and shooting on location. Aitana is an AI model. Since she was created around a year ago, she's amassed a big following and is making thousands a month for her Barcelona-based agency. We That'd intend be... to always try to make it as similar as what an influencer would do. We take a picture. What they're doing here is creating reference photos, right? So this later helps them to match the lighting and um, the, the shadows and so on on uh, the models that they're going to replace her with later. If you want to step up your background knowledge about how this kind of thing is done in movies, I can recommend this channel. They have a series called VFX uh, Artist React, where they show you all kinds of behind the scenes images on, and knowledge on, on how uh, movie effects are created. And capturing uh, reference footage on location is one of the key components of making Godzilla or whatever look good uh, later on when they are getting added uh, through the, the CGI images with me in the image and we have to replace it with AI so we have to play a little bit with lights and shadows to make it as real as possible yeah there you go as well as the main images Aitana's designers make short videos what also helps of course is if they capture just scenic images without AI influences in them because then if you're creating a carousel post with the with the influencer and without it it looks like she's actually on location and the location looks authentic to people who know it to post as her Instagram stories. Back in the studio, they plan. All right, now it gets interesting. In the post. Maybe the Barcelona as the background is gonna be yeah. more interesting. All right, what can we tell from this screenshot? So first thing, they're using Comfy UI in some kind of uh, shape or form. Um, if you don't know what Comfy UI is, um, I suggest you Google it, or <laughs> look up one of the, the many videos about it. Uh, in short, it's basically um, 
the Linux to uh, all the Mac uh, AI images generators out there. So Midjourney being the Mac, taking care of everything, you just enter the prompt, the image comes out perfect. Now with ComfyUI, you have complete control over every single step of the process, like how many iterations, how which uh, image model to use, which LoRa's to add, uh, which upscaler to use, and so on. And you can have a repeatable process that's always the same and where you have complete control over all the variables. So ComfyUI usually runs on your machine locally, so you need a very powerful PC or Mac, but there are services that let you run ComfyUI in the cloud as well. Think Diffusion is one of them. So two other things we can tell from that screenshot if you zoom in a little bit. So the prompt over here is a really se simple one. It's just prompt, the prompt is just a highly realistic image of Aitana V2 pink hair. And since they're starting with a reference image where they're cutting the real life uh, agency person out of the image, I was thinking they were using control net to capture the position that she's in because the position of the, the woman here, the position of Aitana is virtually identical, but it looks like the toggle for control net is turned off. Maybe they are doing this some other way or uh, in some other step uh, um, further down in, in Comfy UI. They're also using Flux 1 Dev. Uh, as their image model, which is uh, perfectly fine. It's one of the best ones out there. And they are uh, adding a, a LoRa, which is trained on images of Aitana. So it's uh, basically a subset of images that tells the general Flux model, this is what Aitana looks like. And every time we mention Aitana in one of the prompts, it will know that it should not generate just any woman with pink hair, but a woman that looks exactly like Aitana. And if we want, we can do a, a, a simple prompt now, uh, put Aitana, and then complement all the prompt with uh, more things like the clothes, the acting. Okay, so I guess this is what they're doing here is in Miro, and they're just planning out what this image should look like afterwards. So they do putting such an uh, incredible amount of work into every single image, like having like a little mood board or something, collection of images that they shot before. And then of course they're going in with a lot more, a lot more detailed prompt, as he just mentioned, like what kind of clothes you should be wearing and, and so on. Because if you go to the original video and you look at these uh, images in high fidelity, you will know that this, this is just the basic flux uh, quality. And those don't look anything at all like the, the quality we're seeing on the final pictures that they put up in, in, on Instagram, right? It's, it's a washed out general version of, of Aitana. So there must be some great uh, f steps coming after that that turn these flux LoRa combination images into the final product. And I have an idea what they're using. This agency won't say exactly which AI image generator they are using, but say they use a mixture of open source models like Stable Diffusion. Sometimes it can throw up some surprises. And we train Aitana <laughs> with... That's interesting that you laughed at that one. Aitana will never wear this, for example. Right, that's what we're so it's... <laughs> That's also really great. You know, Aitana would never wear this, wear this uh, hat, she's saying, uh, because they're really thinking about everything about this. You know, there's a real character who is a personality and, you know, things she would do, things she wouldn't do. Um, so that's what you get if you uh, actually put agency power behind this kind of uh, uh, an account. It's funny because it's like, wow, I would love her to wear this, but she will not wear this. She would we not. spent like two months creating this personality and understanding how she would speak, how she would like interact with her community. So this is why we believe she has been working and she still works. Once the image is chosen, the refinements and corrections are done. They start with seeing what Photoshop's inbuilt AI suggests and I really love this, you know, so they are the first ones who did this, like, uh, you know, the pro level, you know, like the goat, and they're still having the same problems like the rest of us having with, you know, horrible hands and having to replace them later and praying that, you know, some AI generates a usable hand. <laughs> uh, and also now I think they're in Photoshop and doing some after effects work here. Then touch it up by hand. Touch ups used to take around a day, but now it's a few hours because of how the AI's improved so much. A few days later, so I'm pretty sure all of this is uh, Photoshop's creative fill. Final product. So what they haven't shown us yet is the upscaling process. We've seen what the images generated in Flux look like, looks like, and we're seeing what the final images that they are uh, working with in Photoshop are, look are looking like, and they're totally different, right? Because now she's really looking human, right? She has great detailing in her hair. There is like uh, the lighting in catches in her skin and it looks translucent the way it should be. They are using a an upscaler, I'm 100% sure of it. Uh, I haven't really found out which one, but I'm guessing I know which one because there's really only one really great upscaler. Oh, and I promised I wouldn't gatekeep, so the upscaler is most likely Magnific because it's just the best upscaler out there. Uh, they have been blowing 
everything out of the water when they came out like a half a year ago and have only gotten better since. So the way Magnific works is not just an upscaler, it's, they call themselves a creative upscaler. So they will add, as you can see here, maybe if I zoom in, they will add little details in the skin. They will add little hairs where they think it's appropriate. So it's not just taking the pixels that are there and making more of them. It's actually adding more details to the image based on what the AI think the image is. And that's how you get from meh AI generated image to virtually undetectable human looking images. The studio says they can get thousands of pounds a month for sponsored posts and endorsements with Itana. She's now the most famous of this new wave of realistic looking AI models. These look horrible, I'm sorry. <laughs> they look like uh, PlayStation characters. Itana also has an OnlyFans style private membership for underwear and swimsuit shots. Her vir virtual life is built for her mostly male fans, a key demographic for these AI models. Do you think that one day we just won't need any more real life influencers or models? I believe that we are here to stay and AI technology is here to stay as well. So in a way we have to like combine. All right, so which tools and which process can you use to also create great AI images? Well, if you don't want to go to all the trouble of setting up your own comfy UI, run your own stable diffusion thing, uh, even though you could do this a little easier if you don't have the hardware for it uh, through a cloud service, the app that I'm, or the service that I'm still recommending to beginners is RenderNet. It's the one I've recommended in the last video. It's the one I'm still recommending because it's still such a great service uh, and they just keep up with the times, uh, always adding new features. It is great for building out, you know, unique characters and reusing them over and over again in images. And there's a ton of extra features that I've added over the time. So inside of RenderNet, you can create basically, I think, unlimited amount of characters that you want to use in your images. They have an upscaler here that takes them from mad to almost great. They also have like one of these magnific like uh, true touch, they're calling it. So adding more detail to the skin and so on. And they are the only service that I've found so far that still does pose lock. So what you saw in the Aitana video, you know, you can give it a reference image of a pose and the AI image will follow that pose to the tiniest detail. You can decide how much, uh, how closely it should follow it. So it's really helpful if you want to get like an, a, a ballerina jumping and the just from prompting the AI, the generator doesn't know what you what you want from it. They're also doing face replace. They've started doing images. They added like a, a music video feature or something. So I definitely recommend you check it out. Please use my link if you like uh, to sign up. That would help me out a lot. Thanks. Now the next thing you could do is a little more advanced, uh, but you're following uh, the Aitana playbook very closely now. And what they let you do is they give you an online um, AI image generator that uses the Flux 1 dev model, the same one that the Aitana guys were using, um, to create images from a prompt, but you can also give them a character reference in form of a LoRa. What does that mean? So basically what you do is you take 10 or 20 or so images of the character that you've created in different poses, uh, looking a um, little different each time. You upload that into this Flux LoRa Proto Trainer, and then you can give that path to the Flux LoRa image generator. So that's basically the same thing that the Aitana guys were doing when they were mentioning, you know, use the Aitana 2 uh, model. Uh, that's the same thing that you do here. Basically, you give it a name, and your name goes here. Yeah, you always mention like, you know, I want a Peter uh, uh, on top of a, a tall building. It will always take the Peter images from the training uh, package that you've given it uh, and generate images that use the awesome Flux model with the consistent character of Peter that you've created. And File AI lets you do something else if you uh, want to. Uh, you can see down here there's a, a toggle called Safety Checker. You can't disable it in the front end, but you can disable it in the API. So what that lets you do is if you want to create pictures of Peter that are a little spicier than most image generators let you uh, create out of the box, you can just use the setup that you just created via the API of file, and that lets you toggle that safety checker off if you want to, I'm just saying. So if you want to use your file setup via the API, you can just jump over here and there's a nice easy to follow description, you know, just use Claude or ChatGPT to write you a Python script, for example. You could also watch the video until the end and then I have a little surprise for you that will make using the API of file a little bit easier.
Now, speaking of services that let you let generate a little more risky images, there is a service called Genfluence. And it always works the same as a mixture of RenderNet and the file AI setup that I sh showed you. It lets you create a consistent character and uh, lets you define all sorts of poses. So as you can see here in the Discover tab, they let you create really great looking images. Uh, and there's also a little toggle here that you might be looking for or not. Uh, but of course, the service lets you also create these kind of images. Now, I've already mentioned that I'm using Magnific as my go-to upscaler for every image that I generate. Now, the biggest downside of Magnific is that it's still quite expensive. Um, so all the other services run you around uh, $10 a month, and you can go, go a long way with, with that kind of money. But for Magnific, they start at 40 euros a month. So my workaround for that is um, this. So last year, a, a company called Freepik, uh, that was like sort of a, a Canva-ish kind of service, um, bought Magnific, the upscaler. And since then, they have integrated the Magnific Upscaler and also their awesome uh, image generator that Magnific has come out since then inside of their FreePick software. So FreePick started out as a, as a database for free uh, illustrations, icons, videos, and so on. And they've added their AI image generating uh, capabilities. At first, it was really bad, but since they've acquired Magnific, their capabilities have increased tremendously. And they now offer like an image generator, or several image generator uh, models, uh, actually, uh, and the upscaling um, possibility of Magnific. And the difference is the pricing. So for FreePick, uh, the prices start at a, a lot more affordable pricing. All right, so inside of FreePick, you can uh, create images from a prompt uh, using either the Flux 1 dev uh, model that we've been seeing so far, but also the Flux 1.1 model, which is really, really great. And also the Mystic uh, image generating models, which are the ones that are created by Magnific themselves, which again are of another level. It's by far the best um, image generator that I've seen uh, in a long time. You can create your own characters also inside of FreePick and use them with the image generators. But the only image generator so far that support uh, custom characters are Flux 1 Dev and the Mystic standard model, not the Mystic flexible one, which is a little bit better. And aside from just creating images from scratch, they also let you retouch parts of an image, which is what I'm using instead of Photoshop, because it's way more affordable to do this via FreePick. Uh, and they let you upscale images with the fantastic um, engine that also drives Magnific. So the retouching function and the upscaling function are the ones that I'm using mostly uh, with, with FreePick here. All right, so thank you very much for watching this far. I hope you enjoyed this little be look behind the scenes of how the pros are doing it and my little uh, recommendations of the tools that I'm currently using and that you might hopefully find useful as well. So when I was talking about file AI, I mentioned that I have found a little a way to make interacting with the API a bit easier. And what I was talking about uh, is this here. So I've created a little tally form that lets me input the prompt that I want to run against the file API. Uh, just a very, very simple uh, input form. Tally is free to use, by the way. Uh, and what this does, it, it feeds this make uh, scenario that looks complicated, but really isn't. All it does is it waits for the tally form submission that we just saw. Then it makes a request against the file API your, with your API key. And then it waits for the image to be generated and then downloads it uh, and sends it via email. It could also upload that to a Google Drive, a Dropbox, or anything like that. And then it just waits two more times if the first generation took longer than expected. And if you don't want to recreate that make scenario yourself, you can just go to the description of this video or the first comment. And there's another link to a Teleform, this one, where you can just enter your name and your email. And I will send this make automation to you that you can then import into your make account. Just switch out the file API key and you're ready to go. All right, so thank you very much again for watching. And if you haven't seen it, you might want to check out my tutorial on how to not only create AI influencers, we've covered this part already in this video, but how to automate their social media presence as well. I have created an automation that will take the images that you've created and automatically add captions to them and then publish them to Instagram, Facebook, and all the other social media channels that you want to publish them to. So thanks again and see you in the next one.